Hello, here is Fernanda Paiva, Hitchhiking Stars, bringing you insights for every lunation. So every new moon and full moon, we're going to be here talking about it. So today I am especially talking about the full moon on the happening on 24th of February 2024. Well, first of all, before like even getting into the astrology, that's an interesting number, right? So we've got a bit of a mirror number here. We've got 24022024. So it's like a perfect mirror um number. So I believe that that in itself would be a bit of a portal, isn't it? There's a sense of a portal here with this date. So anyhow, this full moon will be happening at 5 degrees Virgo. So the sun will be at 5 degrees Pisces and the moon at 5 degrees Virgo. Um, as usual, what we'll do is to look at the specific degree of the zodiac um, and what the imagery is. We'll reflect a little bit on that and then we'll see what else is in the chart of the full moon. What are the main aspects that this full moon will be um, doing? So as usual, full moons are about culmination, harvesting, something becoming very clear um, to us somehow and this will be a combination of a new moon that happened around the same degree five degrees virgo um a year and a half or a little longer than a year and a half um it will be yeah a year and a half exactly actually 18 months so do you remember what was going on 18 months ago because this is a combination that's connected to that lunar family that's connected to that new moon that happened a, a while ago. So let's have a look at the fifth degree of Virgo. So for the imagery with the Sabian symbols, which is um, I'm always bringing here to you, the imagery is a merry-go-round. That's it. Simple. A merry-go-round. That's the, the image for the fifth degree of Virgo. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, when we think about merry-go-round, I think one of the first things that we think about really, or that I think about, is that we go round and round, but we don't seem to go anywhere else. We're not really moving on. We're not really changing course or arriving at a certain destination, right? The merry-go-round has this sense of a pattern of behavior, something or a cyclic event that always happens in a certain way so this combination has something to do with this image of a merry-go-round that we seem to be always going back somewhere that things seem to happen always in this way to us or you know there's something about that but more than anything because this is a full moon and this is a combination or a harvesting of some sort there is also a question implied in this image of the merry-go-round which is how can you change this pattern? How can you how can you step away from this merry-go-round? How can you stop going in circles? Or not only how can you stop going in circles, but also can you notice anything that you've learned through these patterns? Because I oftentimes I feel that it seems like we have this idea of evolution or growth as a straight line and, and there's no such thing in life. We don't just go up and beyond, but there is this spiral sort of movement, which is very similar to the circling of a merry-go-round. And perhaps we are in this spiral where it seems like we're going back, but we're not we're a little bit more aware and a little bit more aware and we can see the repetition or the situation presenting itself again, but we can make choices. That's where the change in direction really happens when we choose, when we choose to respond differently, when we choose to take a different route or to go a different way or, you know, when we say no, to a similar situation that doesn't empower us, that we don't feel happy, or it don't, doesn't bring us happiness particularly, right? So we always attract in the same kind of unavailable people, and suddenly we decide to say no. 
and we don't take a left and get involved uh, with someone that's unavailable emotionally. We sort of take a right and we get out of the circling of the merry-go-round, right? So I digress a little bit, but there is something really powerful in this simple picture of a merry-go-round in this full moon during this combination in particular, right? And that also makes me think about Gay Hendrix. So Gay Hendrix has a book which I'm reading or rereading at the moment, which is called The Big Leap. And he really explores the idea of the upper limit problem. That we have an upper limit of how much money we can make, of how much love we can take, how much happiness we can manifest in our lives. And when we do a little bit more than that, we feel uncomfortable. We reach the upper limit problem. We can't take any more or we think something's going to go wrong. And, you know, so I think there's something to be said of this merry-go-round or the combination that we might face with this full moon in Virgo that has something to do with our upper limit problem. And a way to overcome that is to observe because what the upper limit does is that we unconsciously sabotage situations, promotions, relationships, because we don't feel that we deserve that. We're unconsciously wired to take just a certain amount. And if anything goes a little bit, you know, lar- it goes a little larger than that, then we feel um, scared or uncomfortable or anxious and we unconsciously end up sabotaging it. So there's something to say about this idea of the upper limit problem, the image of the merry-go-round, and the combination that we're going to be witnessing it during this full moon in Virgo, right? Now we can think about Virgo and Pisces. And what Virgo and Pisces has in common is service. It's service. is a role connected to service or serving. Whereas Pisces is serving the greater good by channeling something, by transcending reality in some way through art, spirituality. Um, Virgo is offering service of a practical nature, of a practical source. So they have that in common there. But there is also, because we're talking of an opposition here, the sun is in opposition to the moon, we're also talking about a, a conflict between being able to surrender and trying to control everything and being rational. That's the Virgo, right? We're trying to control reality. We're trying to protect ourselves from chaos. And Pisces feels very comfortable in a chaotic situation. They can navigate chaos. They can go with the flow. They can feel, they can have hunches and and dreams and, you know, psychic vibrations that they can pick up on and then they navigate the situation whereas Virgo in us wants to control and have everything sorted and organized and in categories and you know we can separate what works from what doesn't work and so on so it's a tight rope between the two here with the full moon not overdoing the organizing and the rational side but also not being lost in chaos as well So how do we balance these two? How can we express these two energies in our lives? This is going to be under the spotlight here with this full moon. But also, there is an emphasis on the Piscean side. And here we come, you know, here comes the moment of the um, aspects of this full moon. So Mercury, which is the ruler of Virgo, is the ruler of the full moon, is in Pisces. So we have Mercury in Pisces, the Sun in Pisces, and in the mixture there, we also have Saturn in Pisces, which is really very far from this full moon. So Saturn is at nine degrees Pisces. And so the question here is, how can we surrender a little more? Because the ruler of this full moon is in Pisces, is bringing us back to the Piscean side of the seesaw of this opposition. So it's really important with Saturn there as well to take our intuition very seriously, to dedicate 
our energy and focus to these Piscean side of life, to the Piscean flavor of life, and emphasize our spiritual practices, perhaps give a structure to our spiritual practices and really embrace it, to channel our creativity, to turn our dreams into reality. That's Saturn in Pisces as well, right? Turning dreams into reality, doing something with our daydreams. So that's there as well. The other aspect that this full moon does is a supportive trine to Jupiter. So Jupiter is at 10 degrees Taurus and the moon is at 5 degrees Virgo. It's a bit of a wide trine, but nevertheless a trine as well. So there's this this feeling of growth that's also connected. So perhaps this full moon will help us, will give us clues about the merry-go-round that we're stuck in in our lives. What is your merry-go-round? Where is this full moon falling in your chart? That's another clue that you're going to get. Is it in the first house, in the tenth house, or the seventh house? Where is it? Because those two houses, the two opposite houses, so let's say the moon's in the first, the sun is in the seventh, will be telling you deeper um will be giving you deeper clues about what this process, what this release of energy will be about for you. And how the seesaw will be placed in these two areas of your life. And that's where the merry-go-round is for you. Patterns of relationships when we have the seventh house and the first house involved. Or merry-go-round might be perhaps about your family life with the fourth house and your career, your social role with the 10th house and how you can bring the balance between the two. So it's really important to find the house where this is going to be placed. But it has something to do with growth as well with Jupiter involved. Now, why this is also so strongly emphasizing growth here or jumping off that merry-go-round that stuck, you know, that we're stuck or that we feel we're stuck in, is because Chiron is conjoined the North Node in Aries as well, very, very strongly. So they're both at 16 degrees Aries. And the North Node will be talking about collective evolution, collective growth, spiritual evolvement from a collective perspective. And Chiron being there is a big release of healing energy here, during this full moon as well. So it emphasizes this this feeling of growth and healing wounds, getting in touch with wounds and etc. With that North Node Chiron in Aries. And it could be a lot about initiative and you know the things that Aries represent and that the North Node and Chiron is already showing us for a while that we've been working with that learning how to let go of people pleasing doing things because we feel obliged to versus doing things because we really feel connected with is tapping into our leadership becoming leaders doing what we want versus doing what everybody else wants us to do so there's something about that flavor that's also part of the blueprint of this full moon and Lastly, but not least, we do have another sub-flavor here, which is Venus and Mars very close together. So we've got Venus at 9 degrees Aquarius, Mars at 8 degrees Aquarius. And they're in the square, 90 degrees to Jupiter in Taurus. So that could be a warning here of overdoing things, overextending yourself. Um having hated the debates maybe with you know the aquarian flavor there um creating separation and conflict potentially by being too strong with your opinions that's aquarius with your beliefs that's aquarius so important to be in tune in touch with your values here as jupiter and taurus always advises us but to be aware of that energy and, and channel that as positively as possible. 
doing something that you love around the time of this full moon, that you believe in, right? Putting that to service somehow. So that's it. This is what I had for you for this beautiful full moon in Virgo. And let's all come out of our merry-go-rounds. Let's find a way out. Um, and, and in particular with the insights that we might have during this full moon. So I'm wishing you all a wonderful, beautiful full moon. Um, full of insights and growth and abundance. And I'll be speaking to you all soon. Bye-bye and take care.